The Bunker is undoubtedly one of the best businesses in GTA Online. I rated it S tier in my business tier list video, and it might be my favorite business in the game. But if you don't know how to use the bunker, you're going to be pretty confused and you won't be making much money from it at all. So today we're going to go over everything you need to know about the bunker if you're a new player in 2020 so that you can make a lot more money and buy the things you want. So if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. And if you ever need any friends or people to help you sell your business stocks, grind out money, do heists, anything like that, join our Discord server because we're building a pretty big community over there. So I'll leave a link in the description below for that one. Before we get into any specific details with the bunker itself, one of the most important things about the bunker is to make sure you buy a bunker in a good location. Most people are just gonna go ahead and buy the one at the top of the map because that's the cheapest one. And obviously that sort of seems like the best option. But believe me, you couldn't be more wrong in this case, and I'll explain why. Whenever you go to sell your bunker stock, you obviously have a delivery mission, and you're gonna make the most money by selling it in Los Santos. So if you have to sell it down in the city here, that is a really, really long drive from the top of the map. And you might think, yeah, that's okay, I'm okay with a bit of a drive. But if you have multiple cell vehicles for a cell mission, and you're doing it by yourself, or something goes wrong, you're not going to be able to sell all of your product in time. So you're going to actually lose a lot of money over time because you're so far away. On top of that, if you choose to steal supplies instead of buying them, which again, we will go over in a second, you're going to have to be going to the bottom of the map, then back up to the top just to resupply your business every time. So again, that takes a lot of time and time is money in a game like GTA. So where do I recommend buying a bunker? Well, personally, I really like the two match bunker. I think that's sort of become the most popular bunker in GTA Online. The reason for that is because it's actually at a pretty good price at 1.65 million, and it's right next to Los Santos, so your cell missions are gonna be really quick. If you do choose to steal supplies, those missions will be a lot quicker as well. So just a really good location. Personally, I actually have one of the bunkers in Sandy Shores up around this area. And for most people, I probably wouldn't recommend these. They are a bit more expensive. They're all sort of around the $2 million mark. But the reason I chose these ones is because they're right next to all of my MC businesses. So they're all sort of in the same area so I can do them all at once, if that makes sense. But for most people and probably for you, I would recommend getting the two mesh bunker. All right, so once you get in the bunker, you'll have to do a quick setup mission, but that shouldn't take too long at all, maybe just a few minutes, and then you can start making some money. Straight away, you'll see three bars on the bottom right of your screen, stock, research, and supplies. Stock shows you how much stock you have to sell, obviously. Research can be conducted by your staff, which can unlock certain weapon upgrades and some armored vehicle upgrades as well. And supplies are what your staff use to make stock. So you basically just have to keep filling that up. At this point, research is pretty unnecessary. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is head over to the laptop in your bunker and switch all of your staff to manufacturing. This is gonna mean that your research bar is never gonna go up, but your stock bar will go up twice as fast because all of your staff are creating stock instead of conducting research. After that, your job becomes pretty simple. Do whatever you want in GTA Online and your staff will create stock in the background. Once you have enough stock, sell it. But when is there enough stock? Like, when should you sell? Really, that depends on how many people you're playing with. So the best way I can explain this is imagine that this stock bar is split up into five mini bars like this. Every mini bar that the stock has reached represents how many vehicles are gonna spawn when you start a cell mission. If that didn't really make sense, if you're playing solo, obviously you only want one cell vehicle, right? Because you're one person, you can only drive one vehicle at a time. So you're never gonna wanna let this bar get over one fifth of the way full. If you're playing with a friend, so you've got two people, you can let it fill up to two fifths of the way, obviously, and so on if you have up to five. Another thing to note about the cell missions is other players can and will try to blow you up during these missions. If someone does manage to kill you and blow up your product, if you close GTA straight away or find a new session straight away, you'll be able to restart the cell mission and you technically won't lose any stock, which technically is a glitch, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to make money sometimes, so do that if you want. 
If you want as well, you can glitch into a solo public lobby to avoid being killed in these missions. If you want to do that, again, I highly recommend doing that and look up a guide for how to do that. But keep in mind that you won't make as much money, and here's why. If you sell your product in a populated lobby, you'll get an extra 1% for each person that's in that lobby. So if there's 10 people in your lobby, you're going to make 10% more money after a sell mission. If there's 25 people, you're going to make 25% more money. And that actually adds up. Like, if you're doing a big sell mission, 25% is a, like, that's a lot. So that's pretty cool, and it's something to consider if you want to or don't want to join a solo public lobby. Another very important thing when you sell is, as you can see when you click on that sell button, if you sell it to Blaine County, you're gonna get whatever it is, but if you sell it to Los Santos, you're gonna get 50% more money. So always, always, always sell to Los Santos. All right, the next thing I wanna go over is how much money you're actually gonna make from this bunker and how to make more money. And to do that, we actually need to talk about the business upgrades. So there's three upgrades available for the bunker, the equipment upgrade, the staff upgrade, and the security upgrade. The security upgrade is gonna reduce the chance of your bunker getting raided by NPCs. And this is definitely useful. It can be really annoying if these NPCs just raid your bunker. Like sometimes they raid it when I'm trying to do the high setups for the casino heist. It's really annoying, like if you're trying to speed run a heist and, and that happens, it sucks. And this is going to reduce the likelihood of that. It's not going to stop it completely, I don't believe. It's not really necessary. I mean, they don't really happen too much in the first place. So I would recommend sort of holding off on that for now until you've got, you know, a lot more money. So the next two upgrades are the staff and equipment upgrades. Both of these upgrades will increase how much money the bunker makes, basically. So let's get into some stats to sort of explain that a bit more. Without either upgrade, the bunker will produce just under $40,000 of stock per hour. If you have the staff upgrade, it's going to increase that to $54,000 an hour. And if you have the equipment upgrade instead of the staff upgrade, it'll produce $55,000 an hour. If you have both of these upgrades, which obviously is ideal, your bunker is going to produce $79,000 of stock per hour, which if you can do some quick maths, that's double the amount of money compared to what it would produce with no upgrades. So obviously these upgrades are extremely important if you want to make a lot of money, so buy them as soon as you can. Obviously because these upgrades are really similar, buy the cheapest one first, so that's the staff upgrade, and then buy the equipment upgrade, because as you can see, they aren't cheap at all. So definitely the staff upgrade first. And the last thing I want to talk about is how to resupply the business. Now that might seem like a bit of a dumb question, but I'm going to explain it. I sort of needed to talk about the upgrades before we talk about resupplying because I get a lot of questions from people complaining about buying supplies for $75,000 and only making $60,000 when they sell. So what's best? Should you buy or steal supplies for your bunker? If you don't have both of the upgrades, you don't want to buy supplies. So always steal supplies until you have those upgrades. And the reason for that is because just like I said, it costs $75,000 to fully restock your bunker. And without the upgrades, you're only going to get $60,000 for one full bar of supplies. And again, if you're any good at maths, you'll be able to tell that you're going to lose money by doing that. When you have the upgrades for the business, personally, I like to buy supplies. As someone who plays solo mainly, it would take five steel missions to fully resupply my bunker, and that takes time. For me, it's more beneficial just to buy supplies, because then I can spend my time doing other things to make money instead of just constantly running on a treadmill resupplying my business. If you're not a solo player and you usually play with probably two or three friends that are going to help you out, you might want to keep stealing supplies because it's only going to take a couple of missions to fully restock your bunker. But for solo players, yeah, probably just buy supplies because remember, time is money in a game like GTA. That's pretty much everything I think I want to go over with the bunker. The only other thing I can really think about is what vehicles are best when you're trying to grind these out. And for that, I'd say probably a Buzzard, maybe a Karuma if you can't afford anything like that. And obviously the Oppressor Mark II is obviously a great choice. So uh, yeah, that'll bring us to the end of the video. 
Again, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And of course, consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this one. If you have any ideas about what you want to see in a future video, comment that below and everything I see, I'll obviously consider. So make sure you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.